So this is section section 7.3, um, adding and subtracting rational expressions. And we are going to do it. Uh, remember this whole section, we're just doing fractions. Um, these rational expressions, they're just fractions. So let's talk about what we already know. How do we add and subtract fractions? For example, if we had 3 fifths plus 2 sevenths, or maybe something like 2 thirds minus uh, 3 fifths. Now this is very different than multiplying and dividing. Um, when we're adding and subtracting fractions, we can't just go straight across like we did with multiplication and division. Um, we have to have a common denominator. We need to have these in, in terms of the same um, amount, essentially. This is in fifths, we have three fifths, and this is sevenths. So you, I'm sure that you've uh, you've seen this before. You know how to how to change these so that they have the same denominator, a common denominator. Um, 35, 5 times 7 is what these both come into. So I'm going to multiply this by 7 sevenths. Notice what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by 1. I'm just changing the form of this. I'm not changing the value. It's still worth 3 fifths. It's still worth 0.6. I'm just changing it so it's in terms of 30 fifths. And this one I'm going to multiply by 5 over 5. And so uh, if I do that, I end up with 21. 7 times 3 is 21. For some reason, I was going to write 27. Thirty-fifths plus ten thirty-fifths, and now that I have this in terms of thirty-fifths, now I can add them. Twenty-one of them plus ten of them is thirty-one of them. Notice it's still uh, it's thirty-fifths, so it's uh, thirty-one thirty-fifths. Subtracting fractions is is the same the same idea. Um, as I go to subtract these, I need the common denominator before I can combine them. And three and five that's going to be fifteen. So I'm going to multiply this one by this version of 1. I'm going to multiply this one by this version of 1. So this becomes 10 sixths minus 9. Oh, why sixths? That's really weird that I put sixth. 10 fifteenths minus 9 fifteenths. And 10 of them minus 9 of them is 1 of them. And the them happens to be fifteenths. So this is 1 fifteenth. Now, if I could reduce these fractions after I did all that work, I would. Um, in this case, I ended up not doing that. So let's do these with, uh, with some variables. So for example, let's say I had something like uh, 3y, uh, I'm sorry, 3 over y plus y over 3. So this is addition. So I can't just add straight across. I need a common denominator. And in this case, it's going to be 3 times y. Just like here, it ended up being 5 times 7. So I'm going to multiply this one by this version of 1. I'm going to multiply this one by this version of 1. And again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it so those denominators match each other. So this is going to be 9 over 3y plus y times y is y squared. Um, y squared over 3y. And as I go to add those together, uh, y squared plus 9, well, that's just y squared plus 9. Kind of nice to be able to be lazy about that over 3y and i'm done um i can't i can't reduce anything from here because um in order to cancel this out i would have to have a whole y squared plus nine uh, to cancel it out with i can't do like the three into the nine let's do another example if i had if i had i'm going to have something like x over x plus one uh, plus 3 over 4. So let's go ahead and do this, taking a look at this. I noticed that um, I have a 4 and an x plus 1. So this, this fraction needs a, a 4 in it, this denominator, and this one needs an x plus 1. And again, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying each of these by a version of one, it doesn't change the value of it. But what it does do is it does change uh, the form. So now I have common denominators. Four times x is four x. And um, I'm not gonna multiply this out. I'm just gonna leave it as four times x plus one. Plus uh, three times x plus one. And this denominator 
4 times x plus 1. So let me keep going from here. Now the denominator, I'm just going to, it stays the same. It's, it's my denomination. It's, it's, my, it's my unit. It's what I'm counting by. So this is just going to be 4 uh, times x plus 1. And uh, notice up here now, I'm going to add these together. So I have 4x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now this I can simplify. So I'm going to distribute that 3 into there. So this is the same as 4x plus 3x plus 3. So 4x plus 3x is 7x. over 4 times x plus 1. And that, I'm not going to be able to factor that any further. So this is what that simplifies to. Great, let's do a couple more examples then. I'm going to erase this and step up to my next one. So I'm going to have a 10 over x times x plus 5. And in this case, now I'm going to subtract 2 over x. All right, so I have subtraction, just like addition, in the sense that I need a common denominator in order to combine them. And notice they both already have an x in them. So I actually don't need to add anything to this one. It already has an x. But on the, uh, on the other one, I'm going to need an x plus 5. So now those, those uh, denominators are the same. So now I'm in good shape. So notice up top what I have is, uh, is 10 over x times x plus 5 minus uh, 2 times x plus 5 over x times x plus 5. Now I'm going to keep that denominator the, the same. It's just my denominator. And at the top, I'm doing the subtraction. So I have 10 minus 2 times x plus 5. Now I can, uh, I, can, I can simplify that numerator. I can take this negative 2. Remember, we're going to take the negative with it and distribute that into there. So this is the same as 10 minus 2x. And again, the negative goes with the 2. It's a negative 2 minus negative 2 times 5, 10. So 10 minus 10, that cancels out. So that's interesting. That leaves me with a negative 2x, because 10 minus 10 is 0, over x times x plus 5, which is great. That's equivalent to that. That does work. There is one thing I notice here. This is negative 2 times x. This is x times x plus 5. I can do a little canceling here, a little dividing. Um, x divided by x is, is 1. So this actually is equivalent to negative 2 over x plus 5. And we lost a little information. x can't be 0. But um, let me also emphasize what this is saying. This is saying that this and this are equivalent statements, with the exception of when x is 0, because I lost that information. So in other words, like if I plug 100 in for x here, I would get an answer. I could plug 100 in for x here, and I would get the exact same answer. They're, they're equivalent to each other. Great, let's do one more example like this. I'm actually going to do more than one more example. Let's just do another example. Let's do um, a plus 2 over a plus 1. I'm going to add that to 7 over a squared minus 5a minus 6. And this is an a plus 1. I need a common denominator. I'm adding. Just so if I add or subtract, I need to do that. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to factor this, because this might have an a plus 1 in it. I don't want to do redundant. I don't want to make it more work than I need it to be. So let me try and factor this. Uh, negative 6 and positive 1. Yeah, it does. So this factors to a minus 6 times a plus 1. So notice that, that what I have here is um, a plus 2 over a plus 1. 
and that is added to 7 over a minus 6 times a plus 1. Now they both have an a plus one in them, so I, I don't need to add. I don't need to get an additional a plus one to any of them. But this one has an a minus six in this, this denominator. And again, I want those denominators to be the same. So what I'm going to multiply by is this version of one. And again, I'm doing that so I'll have common denominators. So now, if I if I do that after I do that. Notice what I'm going to have is, is a minus 6 times a plus 2 over um, a minus 6 times a plus 1. And notice that's going to be plus 7 over the same denominator. So I'm actually just going to say, I'm going to combine those up right now. That's the same as that. Now, this looks pretty good. Um, and I can go further. I can combine, I can simplify this numerator. So what I'm going to do is, is multiply this out. a times a is a squared. Uh, negative 6 times a is negative 6a. 2 times a is 2a. So this is negative 4a. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. And notice that's still plus 7. So as I keep going on this, uh, my numerator is an a squared minus 4a uh, minus 12 plus 7. So that would be minus 5 over a minus 6 times a plus 1. Now notice again, I'm not multiplying out that denominator. And I'm not doing that. I'm doing that on purpose because um, there's no need for it. it. It's more work than I need to do. And in fact, I might not be done. What I need to do now is factor this numerator and see if anything cancels out. So uh, negative five. This would this would factor to a uh, a minus five times a plus one. So notice that a plus one divided by a plus one is one. So this is actually equal to a minus five over a minus six. We lost a little information, right? A can't be negative one, but this is equivalent to that. And notice like this is a much easier thing to deal with with that. If I told you A was 50, you'd have to plug in a 50 in all these places, you have to square it, combine everything, or you can just plug it in here and you'll get the same answer. So let's do one more example of uh, addition subtraction. So I'm going to have X. I'm going to change color. 6 over x squared minus 9 uh, minus 5 over x squared minus x minus 6. So um, I need a common denominator. And these are, these are pretty big denominators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor them both and see what they, if they have anything in common. This is difference of squares. So this is an x plus 3 times an x minus 3. And if I take a look at this one, things that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1 would be uh, x minus 3 and x plus 2. Yeah. So that means that uh, they, both, they both have an x minus 3. So I don't need to add that to either of them. But this one has an x plus 2 and this one doesn't. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by that version of 1, x plus 2 over x plus 2. And then this one, notice, has an x plus 3, but this one doesn't. So I'm going to multiply this one by that version of 1, x plus 3 over x plus 3. And notice I'm thinking of this as the denominator instead of that. So if I combine these up now, so now I have 6 times that, so 6 times x plus 2, and that's going to be over a uh, x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. 
And they have the same denominator, x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3. So I can combine them. So then that's minus 5 times this. So the, that denominator, I'm going to leave that uh, factored. I'm going to leave that as it is. x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then this numerator, I can, I can simplify a bit. So I can distribute that 6 into there. So this is a 6x plus 12. And then that's a negative 5 that's going to distribute into there. Make sure you take that negative with you. So negative 5x minus 15. So if I combine up those terms, um, 6x minus 5x is x. Uh, 12 minus 15 is negative 3. So I have this. And then hopefully uh, you notice, you see, that I can do a little division there. x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1. So this leaves me 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 3. And again, I want to emphasize that I lost a little bit of information. x cannot be 3. Um, but other than that, this is equivalent to that. So for this problem, um, we're supposed to write something out and then simplify it. So let's take it a piece at a time. Uh, write an expression for this. The sum of, so we're going to add some things together. The sum of a number. So I'll just say x. And 3 times its reciprocal. So its reciprocal, um, that is just like flipping the fraction. So its reciprocal is 1 over x. But we want 3 times its reciprocal. So we want basically that times 3. And this then is the same as x plus that 3 is over 1. So 3 over x. So this right here is the sum addition of a number and 3 times its reciprocal. And then we're supposed to simplify it. So now we can, we have it written, so let's simplify it. Um, this x is just the same as an x over 1. And I'm going to add some fractions here. So this one's already over an x. This one needs to be the same. So that has a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by this version of 1. Um, x times x is x squared. They have a common denominator. So x squared plus 3 is in the numerator. And that's just over x, right? Because the denominator doesn't change. That's just this many of them plus this many of them is this many of them. So there's the answer to that one right there. So in this problem, uh, we're given a bit of information. One number is three times another. Then it says, write an expression for the sum of their reciprocals, then simplify. So let's take this one piece at a time. One number, so something, is three times another. So... Let me start with this another. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to call it x. And so there's one of my numbers. Um, one number is 3 times another. So if I go 3 times that, there's my two numbers, x and 3x. So there's that first part. Um, write an expression for the sum, so there's going to be some addition going on, of their reciprocals. Uh, reciprocals just means flip them over. So instead of x, it's 1 over x. And instead of 3x, it's 1 over 3x. Great, so there's the expression for the sum of their reciprocals. And then we're supposed to simplify. So um, I need a common denominator because I'm adding some fractions. This already, they, they both have x's, so I'm good. This one has a 3, this one needs a 3. So I'm going to multiply by this version of 1. And if I do that, 3 times 1 is 3 over 3x plus 1 over 3x. 3 plus 1 is 4, so I have 4 over 3x. Um, yeah, that's it right there. Great. Take a look at the problems in the text. You know, read the chapter from the text. Send me some emails uh, if you have some questions. All right, have fun with this chapter.